A Chinese researcher claims to have helped make the world's first gene-edited babies. Twin girls whose DNA he says he altered with a powerful new tool that lets scientists edit the genetic code. I feel a strong responsibility uh, that it's not just make it first, but also make it uh, as example. Scientist He Jinghui says he edited the baby's genes to try to give them a trait few people naturally have to help them resist HIV infection. His work has not yet been independently confirmed or reviewed by other scientists. But if proven, it crosses a new frontier in medicine and ethics. If it's not safe or have any problem, it may rule the entire field and the people may lose the trust in the new technology. He says he edited embryos for seven couples during IVF fertility treatment. So far, there's been one pregnancy. The gene editing was done using a tool called CRISPR-Cas9. It works by making a cut in the DNA to disable a specific gene. Dr. Kira Musunuru, an expert with no role in the experiment, considers it unethical. We still have a lot of work to do to prove and establish that the procedure is actually safe. I would say that no babies should be born um, at this point in time following the use of this technology. It's simply too early, too premature. He and many mainstream scientists say this type of gene editing should not be attempted yet because it could make permanent changes to DNA that could affect future generations or cause harm if other genes are affected. Some worry it will be used to design babies with desired traits. We have to balance the potential benefits with the potential risks for the people involved. In cases where the potential risks are substantially higher than the benefits, which I think is the case here, that is not ethical. Gene editing has only recently been tried in adults to treat serious diseases, and those changes are just in that person. It's not allowed to be used in the U.S. and many other countries on embryos intended for pregnancy. But Huzz says it's only a matter of time. The world has moved on to the stage for embryo gene editing. There will be someone somewhere who is doing this. If it's not me, it's someone else. He says he supports the development of international guidelines on how to use this gene editing technology, saying in the end, society will decide how to move forward. Kathy Young, Associated Press. Two beautiful little Chinese girls named Lulu and Lala came crying into the world as healthy as any other babies a few weeks ago. The girls are home now with their mom, Grace, and the dad, Mark. Grace started her pregnancy by regular IVF with one difference. Right after we sent her husband's sperm into her egg, we also sent in a little bit of protein and instruction for a gym surgery. When Lulu and Lala was just a single cell, this surgery removed the doorway through which HIV entered to infect people. A few days later, before returning Lulu and Lana to Greece warm, we checked how the gene surgery went by whole genome sequencing. The result indicated that the surgery worked safely as intended. Grace's pregnancy was normal, which we monitored closely by ultrasound and blood tests. After birth, we again deep sequencing Lulu and Lana's whole genome. This verified the gene surgery worked safely. No gene was changed except the one to prevent HIV infection. The girls are safe, healthy as any other babies. When Mark saw her daughter for the first time, he said that he never thought he could be a father. No, he has found a reason to live, a reason to work, a purpose. You see, Mark has HIV. Discrimination in many developing countries makes the virus worse. Employer fire people like Mark. Doctor deny medical care and even falsely sternness a woman. Mark and Greece 
couldn't bear to bring a child into that world of fear. Mark's words told me something I didn't fully appreciate. A gene surgery that could save a child from a lethal genetic disease like cystic fibrosis or from an life-threatening infection like HIV. It doesn't just give that little boy or girl an equal chance at a healthy life. We heal a whole family. As a father of two girls, I can't think of a gift more beautiful and wholesome for the society than giving another couple a chance to start a loving family. The media heaped panic about the Louis Brown's birth as the first AVF baby. But for 40 years, regulation and morals has developed together with AVF, ensuring only therapeutic application to have more than 8 million children came into this world. Gym surgery is another AVF advancement and is only meant to help a small number of families. For a few children, early gene surgery may be the only viable way to heal an inherited disease and prevent a lifetime suffering. We hope you have the mercy for them. Their parents don't want a desired baby, just a child who won't suffer from a disease which medicine cannot prevent. Gene surgery is and should remain a technology for healing. Enhancing IQ or selecting higher or eye color is not what a loving purple does. That should be banned. I understand my work will be controversial, but I believe family need this technology and I am willing to take the criticism for them. So you can learn more about our moral value and work. We will post up a few more simple video. You can also visit our NAV website via the link below. If you wish to write Lulu and Lala or myself, use the email on your screen. This is the artificial womb facility, a place where humans could be grown entirely from scratch. The devices you see here are called growth pods. Each growth pod is designed to replicate the same conditions that exist inside the mother's uterus. Growth pods are designed to host human fetuses until they are fully developed. These artificial wombs are designed to help premature babies to continue developing after their birth. But emerging scientific research is making it possible to use them to create designer humans entirely from scratch. In terms of design, the artificial womb consists of the growth chamber which hosts the fetus. It replicates the same environment provided by the mother's uterus. It is the incubation chamber that provides the optimal temperature and humidity for the growth of the fetus. There is another container which provides the fetus with the constant stream of blood that is rich of oxygen until the moment of birth. The artificial womb is filled with the amniotic fluid which is the liquid that surrounds the fetus inside the mother's uterus. This liquid is rich of the essential nutrients that are needed to sustain the unborn fetus inside the womb. The growth chamber also features advanced sensors coupled with artificial intelligence. These sensors monitor the fetus's vital signs during the development process, which include breathing and heartbeat. The artificial womb also features a screen which displays real-time data on the development progress of the fetus. Inside this growth pod, 
the fetus is kept for 9 months until a full course of development is reached. The first design of the artificial womb was patented by Emanuel Greenberg back in 1955. He developed the concept with the hope of helping premature babies to continue developing after their birth. Back then, baby incubators already existed, so no one really moved forward to building the prototype of the artificial womb. In the 1990s, researchers at Tokyo University's medical department tested the artificial womb to see if it actually works. They removed a goat fetus from its mother by C-section. Then they placed it in a rubber womb filled with artificial amniotic fluid. And the little guy was delivered 17 days later. In 2002, scientists built mini artificial wombs using cells extracted from the uterus itself. These lab-made wombs allowed embryos to attach themselves to their walls just like the natural process. Even though the embryos began to grow and develop, they were terminated five days later due to ethical concerns. In 2017, scientists from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia managed to use a primitive design of the artificial womb, where they placed a premature lamp fetus. After keeping the lamb fetus for four weeks inside the artificial womb, it started growing a wool coat, gained weight, and even opened its eyes. The researchers went on to test their design of the artificial womb with more lamps, and their experiments were successful.